Hello, my name is Jeff Girardi and thank you for taking some time to learn more about the SOLIDWORKS data management products. As you most likely know, SOLIDWORKS has introduced a new data management product in 2016, SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard, while also announcing the end of life for legacy PDM product, SOLIDWORKS Workgroup PDM. In this section, we'll first review the announcements regarding the data management portfolio, and then we'll take a look at some of the key functional differences between SOLIDWORKS Workgroup PDM and SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard, as well as compare SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard and SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional. Finally, you probably need some help determining which PDM solution is best for your company, so we'll discuss the business needs that each of these tools satisfy so you can choose the best fit for your use case and budget. There are three major changes that were announced regarding data management tools in 2016. First off, the entry-level Workgroup PDM product first introduced to SOLIDWORKS users in 2000, will be supported through the SOLIDWORKS 2017 release and will no longer be available come SOLIDWORKS 2018. What does this mean for you? If you're currently not using SOLIDWORKS Workgroup PDM, don't start now and keep watching this lecture for more information on SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard and Professional. If your company does currently use Workgroup PDM, it will remain in the software through SOLIDWORKS 2017 Service Pack 5 and be supported by GoEngineer and SOLIDWORKS until support officially ends for that software version, currently slated for December 31st, 2018. Workgroup PDM will no longer be available to any customer in SOLIDWORKS 2018. That means you don't have to migrate all of your data to the new platform immediately, you still have some time, but you should begin planning what that migration will involve and GoEngineer has tools and services to help facilitate any data migration from Workgroup PDM. The second product announcement is the introduction of a new entry-level data management tool called SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard. This product is available to customers running SOLIDWORKS Professional or SOLIDWORKS Premium and shares a similar architecture and interface with its big brother, PDM Professional. This new tool is more robust for larger data sets than the outgoing Workgroup PDM it replaces and provides a straightforward upgrade path for those needing more capability or outgrowing the basic data management capability that PDM Standard provides. Finally, the third announcement is a name change for the product previously known as SOLIDWORKS Enterprise PDM. It has now been rebranded SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional and continues to be a standalone PDM solution. Outside of the normal annual enhancements and updates and having the installers wrapped into the SOLIDWORKS Installation Manager, Major functionality remains unchanged. If you're not already familiar with SOLIDWORKS PDM, let's take a quick look. It starts right inside Windows Explorer, something we're all familiar with, and the vault is basically a secure folder, prompting me to log in upon access. Files can be organized as needed by creating subfolders or project structures, and you can save files directly into the vault or add them using your normal Windows techniques like drag and drop, copy and paste, etc. Checking in these files makes them available to all users who have permission to this folder and PDM recognizes the file structure automatically. We can see that this assembly has several subassemblies and drawings associated with it. The Windows Explorer interface has two parts, a file listing at the top and a series of tabs at the bottom. The first tab is our eDrawings preview where we can zoom, rotate, and look at our files in 3D. The next tab is the data card, which provides detailed information about the file and can extract custom property values to populate that metadata. Values from the data card can be reused in bills of materials, the details view in Windows Explorer, they can be searched on and sorted by. The bill of material tab gives us a snapshot of an assembly at any particular version or revision. The contains tab lists all the files that are referenced by this file and the where used shows where a file or assembly may be used throughout the entire vault. At this point all of the files are checked in and locked. If a change is required that part needs to be checked out. It's generally a good idea to check where the part is used to determine the impact of this change on other files that reference it. Here we can see that this part is used in an assembly, the assembly drawing, and its own part drawing. These are all of the files that will be affected by a change to this part. I'll choose the top level assembly and open it up inside of SOLIDWORKS. 
the system will prompt me with a checkout dialog box and I can select all those files that we plan to change. I'll first modify the whole size and then update and save the drawing file. Going back to the assembly, we can see that the assembly is already up to date and all I need to do now is update the assembly drawing. Over in the SOLIDWORKS PDM task pane, it provides us with information about the file and its references. In this case, it identifies that the three files are newer than the latest version in the vault. So I'll check them back in, add a comment, and everyone on the team will be up to date with my latest changes. If I ever need to go back to a previous version, it's just a click or two away. Now that I've completed my changes, I'll push my files through the workflow by changing state to indicate that my work is done and my changes are ready to be released. If you're a current Workgroup PDM user, you can expect some differences in how you use PDM standard. While both systems are available to customers who own SOLIDWORKS Professional and SOLIDWORKS Premium, and both systems provide a means for auditing design history, the similarities more or less end there. PDM standard uses Windows Explorer, not SOLIDWORKS Explorer and not the PDM task pane add-in inside of SOLIDWORKS as its primary interface. You will browse to open, save, copy, paste, etc, etc, etc through Windows Explorer and normal file open or file save as dialog boxes just as you would for any other file types that you work with day in and day out. Versions and revisions are also treated differently. In Workgroup PDM, every file iteration is considered a revision and as a result you may have a revision schema that has one, two, or potentially three different components with an optional working version designation on top of that. And it's up to the user to increment the correct component. In PDM standard, we decouple versions and revisions. A version is something that gets created on each check-in if the file has changed, whereas a revision is basically a label applied by the workflow to the particular file version that you are releasing. Finally, we do away with two concepts that are unique to Workgroup PDM working directory and file ownership. The workgroup PDM concept of working directory no longer exists in PDM standard. While files are still cached locally when accessed by the client, they're not flattened into a single folder outside of the vault environment. Files are checked out and are cached in the folder structure displayed in Windows Explorer. This cuts down considerably in confusion, reference issues, and users trying to work around the vault. When you check in a file, it's checked in to the folder that it was saved in. Users don't need to select the project on initial check-in. In PDM standard, file ownership is tied strictly to the checkout status. Simply put, if a file is checked out, it is quote-unquote owned by that user, and if the file is checked in, it is owned by no one and available for read-only access. Speaking of permissions, let's take a bit of a peek under the covers. Architecturally, Workgroup PDM and PDM Standard are completely different. Whereas Workgroup PDM is a flat folder-based system using text files to manage file references and metadata, PDM Standard uses a Microsoft SQL Express database backend along with a hexadecimal folder structure for file hashing that delivers better and more reliable performance as datasets continue to grow. It shares this architecture with its big brother, PDM Professional, making a straightforward upgrade path when appropriate. The permissions themselves are very granular, especially as compared to Workgroup PDM. For example, I can assign folder permissions in Workgroup PDM as follows. Read only, read write, or no access. That's it. 
In PDM standard, we have specific control over who can see, who can edit, who can move, who can delete, who can destroy, who can see bombs, and the list goes on. Another prime example, creating folders. This is a permission in PDM standard done through the user interface, not something that has to be done through the administration tool. Once set up, the day-to-day -day administrative overhead of PDM standard is significantly lower than that of workgroup PDM. Finally, for those of you who can't seem to get by with out-of-the-box functionality, there is no API access available in SOLIDWORKS PDM standard. Similarly, if you own the Workgroup PDM Advanced Server providing web portal access, that is also not available in PDM standard. You would need to go to SOLIDWORKS PDM Professional for web and or API access. A product matrix is available in the file section of this course, which highlights the key differences between Workgroup PDM, PDM Standard, and PDM Professional. Let's now compare the capabilities between SOLIDWORKS PDM Standard and PDM Professional. As I mentioned in the previous lecture, PDM Standard and PDM Professional share the same underlying product architecture, with PDM Standard having a restricted set of capabilities while providing a straightforward upgrade path for those customers who start out on PDM Standard and later need to take advantage of PDM Professional functions. Both systems share the same user interface, both in Windows Explorer and inside of SOLIDWORKS, so the user experience is completely consistent between the two platforms. Licensing for PDM Professional is not tied in any way to your SOLIDWORKS licensing. PDM Professional is a separately purchased product, not included with any version of SOLIDWORKS. Starting with user logins, PDM Professional can tie in to an Active Directory or LDAP server enabling users to log in with their normal Windows credentials and not having to maintain a separate username and password for PDM. PDM Standard, on the other hand, the only option is for administrators to maintain the system credentials for the users. While you can check in or check out any file type in either system, PDM Standard only supports built-in preview of SOLIDWORKS files through eDrawings. PDM Professional supports the preview of Office files, PDFs, images, 2D AutoCAD, and many more common file types. We start to see more considerable differentiation in capability as we get into the workflows. In PDM Standard, only one workflow is permitted, and it is limited to a maximum of 10 states, meaning all documents stored in the vault must follow the same process. Additionally, there is no means for supporting a parallel review or approval process in PDM Standard. In PDM Professional, however, you are not restricted on the number of workflows or workflow states. That means that files can follow different processes based on naming convention, folder path, data card variable, or any number of factors. We can introduce logic into the workflow to enable parallel approval paths or even transition files between workflows. If we stay on the topic of workflow capabilities, it is very common for people to have PDM Professional automatically create PDFs or other neutral file types as a task triggered by the workflow. These tasks, as well as email notifications, are only available in PDM Professional. PDM Professional also provides a capability to create files and folder structures from PDM templates. These templates can also optionally use serial numbers to name the files and or folders, another capability only available in Professional. If you have distributed design teams, PDM Professional has a means of setting up additional replicated archive servers to sync data between multiple locations automatically, as well as the ability to host access via a web portal. Finally, if connectivity to other systems is important to you, PDM Professional has tools that make it relatively easy to export data out of the system, whether that be PDF or other neutral CAD files, like previously mentioned, or metadata in an XML or CSV format. There's also the PDM Professional API, which is included and well-documented for building other integrations or expanding the out-of-the-box capabilities of the tool. Again, look at the files section of this lesson for my matrix of key differentiators between PDM Standard and PDM Professional. So far, we've learned about the changes to the data management product portfolio, seen a brief introduction to PDM Standard, 
and reviewed some of the key differences between Workgroup PDM, PDM Standard, and PDM Professional. So how do you know which data management solution is best for your company going forward? First off, if you're new to SolidWorks, or new to data management for that matter, then it should be an easy decision to skip over Workgroup PDM, a product with a known limited lifespan, which would ultimately result in migration costs for you down the road, should not even be part of the discussion at this point. So the decision really comes down to PDM Standard or PDM Professional. There are a number of business needs that would mandate the use of PDM Professional based on its available feature set. So let's start there. If you support multiple offices where engineering or other source data is created and have a need to access those source files from multiple locations, PDM Professional is needed to replicate the data between those locations. If you need to support multiple business processes or otherwise treat certain files in your system differently than others, only PDM Professional provides support for multiple workflow processes. If you need to connect or integrate PDM with other business systems, PDM Professional is the only solution with automatic data export or API accessibility. And finally, if your user base is not strictly tied to CAD, then PDM Professional is the better option. Certainly there are other differentiators as well, but these are the major drivers to PDM Professional. If you have a small group of SolidWorks Professional or Premium users, who simply need a centralized place to safely and effectively store and manage your CAD data and don't have many other needs beyond that at this point, PDM Standard would be a great option to get started with. Before making any purchasing decisions, or if you have any questions at all regarding SOLIDWORKS data management products, please contact your account manager and we are happy to help determine the best solution for your specific needs. The remainder of this course, presented by some of our senior data management specialists, will walk you through the installation, initial configuration, and end-user training content. Once again, this has been Jeff Girardi with GoEngineer, and I hope you've enjoyed learning about SOLIDWORKS PDM. Mm -hmm.